Open your Bibles to Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Pray for me while I'm up here. Um, Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Well, you got to say, I got it. I'm going to chill out for a minute. Wait till you get it. Oh. Wow, I forgot about that. All right. But I'll still give you a minute to go into your own word and get it. Cause you, you won't have this at home. <laughs> you won't have this at home. This, this, is, called, this is called extra. <laughs> the extra help. But uh, it's important that we turn to it. So as I'm reading it, if I read wrong, raise your hand and say that's not what it says, preacher. Romans chapter 12. Verse 11. Y'all ready? All right. One simple sentence with a lot of substance in it. And it reads, Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. The Lord. Father, we want to thank you before we even go into this. And we ask, Lord, that you would anoint all of our ears and our minds and our hearts and allow me to rest in your anointing because this has nothing to do with me. This is about what you want us to do and what you have called us to do. So allow us to um, take this to heart and do what it says. For we know your word will accomplish what it was sent out to do. It does not matter who is speaking it, whether it is me or someone else, but your word will do what it's supposed to do. We thank you for your word, and we ask that we would take heed today. Bless us, Lord. We need you. Without your anointing upon our ears and our hearts right now, we won't receive anything. So we ask that um, we will rest in your anointing. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're going to talk about spiritual diligence. Spiritual diligence. Because the, pa- the passage says, Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about being diligent about the things of God today. Um, it's, it's important that we, we're diligent about things of God. Um, because we're diligent about a lot of stuff in life, and sometimes they don't have nothing to do with God. Um, and so you would ask, what does it mean to be diligent? What does it mean to be diligent? It means that you put effort and care into something. It means that whatever you're doing that you're putting diligence in, it means it's very important to you. And that you do it with some enthusiasm. That you're excited about doing it when you're diligent about something. It's something you want to get done. And we, we are diligent about a lot of things, okay? Um, sometimes we're diligent about homework. Um, sometimes. For those of us who love to study, and we're, we're diligent about studying. Um, some of us are diligent about work. You know, we make sure we get there. We work at it with effort and care. I know in my job, I put some effort and some care into it. I don't want to lose it. So I'm going to be diligent about working. Okay? Um, Some of us are diligent about television. Um, You know, we we set up our whole day to make sure it doesn't interfere with this show. Okay? But we, you know... But what I'm saying is I'm saying the importance we put on some things sometimes. You know, we make sure that we got the kids fed, you know, that I've already read and prayed, okay? Uh, I've already talked to my homeboy or my homegirl, my boyfriend, girlfriend, wife. I've got everything out the way so I can have this set of time to watch this show. So you've been diligent about making sure you put that in place, okay? We've got to do the same 
with our spiritual life. Yeah. Because talk about some spiritual diligence. And when I say spiritual, I'm talking about we have to put some diligence into serving Jesus Christ. Yes. Christ Jesus. It's important that we understand that. When I say spiritual up here, I'm not talking about any old thing. Because a lot of people will say spiritual is anything. No. Mm-hmm. The spiritual I'm talking about is lordship and servanthood and submissiveness to Jesus Christ. Yes. So we, yes. we really got we really got to make that clear. Yes. Yes. Um, and in order to be spiritually j- diligent, we have to put a few things in place. There has to be some things in place. And in order for us to do that, we must have a passion to serve Christ. We must have a passion to serve Christ. We must have a boundless enthusiasm about getting Christ's work done or whatever he's called us to do. We must have powerful emotion behind what we're doing for Christ. It cannot just be mediocre. It cannot just be a part of what's going on. It has to be something that we dig into to see what God wants us to do and then we work at it with all of our heart. That we be diligent about doing it. But we cannot serve Christ with a passion if he's not number one. Okay? A lot of things we're diligent about we put of most importance. But in order for us to serve Christ with a passion and to be spiritually diligent, he has to be number one. When you look at Mark 12, 28 through 30, and this is why I say you cannot serve Christ with a passion if he's not number one. Okay? He can't be one and a half, two, you know, one and three fourths, or three fourths of that one. No. He has to be number one. Numero uno. He has to be that. And so we look at Mark. And this is why I say this. And I'm trying to back everything I say up biblically. Because one thing I know is that if we're going to do something, Jesus needs to be our role model. And he needs to have, we need to have his seal of approval on it. Mark 12 28 through 30 says, One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Number one, the most important is that you love him with all of that. So what that's saying is not only do you say that's important, but when, we, when you look at that, it means that he has to be, be number one. He didn't leave nothing out of the vitals when it comes to what we chase after. It was all there. So we need to make sure of that. So the first decision we have to make in being spiritually diligent is that we serve Christ with passion. We have to have passion behind it. And as we go in, we're going to talk about this zeal, okay, and being enthusiastic about Christ, being enthusiastic about serving. We have to make sure that it doesn't become boring, okay? Okay. Serving God is not boring. It's only boring when it's not important to you, okay? We go to work. Some days it works boring, some days it's not, but those days that are kind of boring, you try to do something to make it a little better, right? You know, talk to your co-workers, tell a few jokes or something. Let's Let's liven this place up because I have to be here. That's what we have to do in Christ. We have to be enthused about it. When it seems like it's getting boring, it's not. You have to do something. Do something that's going to make it a little more exciting. Too many times we spend our spiritual lives thinking that serving God is boring. And it's not boring. It's not. And if you think it's boring, it's because you really haven't stepped in to his presence. You really haven't dug into his word. You really haven't spent time with people who love God. So we need to make sure that we're very, very zealous about God. We have to be committed to service in God's kingdom. You cannot, again, this is not somewhere you just choose to do it a little bit. This takes full commitment. This takes the giving of your life to Jesus Christ for what he wants to do with it. Not what we want to do with it. We have spent enough time doing what we want to do with our lives. Enough time. We spent a whole bunch of time doing that, Joe. But we have spent enough. Luke 9, 62. 
Jesus replied, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. What is that saying again? You have to be committed to his service. You have to be ready to put your hands on that plow and go forward and don't look back. Anytime you look back, it means you stop. You stop. Pushing the plow is not easy. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't push and look back and just... You know, you, no, you, 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 you can't do that. You have to put some, some strength and some effort into pushing the plow so you don't have time to look back. And if you look back, what it means is you're missing what was back there. That's, that's what you really want. So you keep going back to what you shouldn't be going back to because you're not ready for service. That's so we have to we, we, we have to have some fervor and that fervor is being I'm not even going to go with a theological definition what I'm going to say is, is keeping the fire for Jesus Christ yeah. it's being on fire yeah. it, that it doesn't get cold yeah. my spirituality shouldn't get cold it should always be on fire when it gets cold I just call one of my friends <laughs> and talk to them and I get off the phone or come from their house or whatever on fire ready to do the Lord's work we went to a conference one time and we when God had placed this college ministry on my heart and I was disobedient I didn't do it right away but I asked Joy I came out of that place running down the hill and said man we gotta do this we go to college of Red, we get on the campus I was I was full of fire I was full of fire that's where we need to be that's that fervor we need to be on fire for Jesus Christ but in order to be committed to service in God's kingdom we have to rebuke spiritual laziness we have to rebuke spiritual laziness. Too many times we get spiritually lazy and just quit. And then figure we come back in a couple weeks. I don't feel good today. I'm not going to church today. Just something ain't right. I'm dealing with this and dealing with that. You get a spiritual lazy, spiritually lazy. We stop reading. Spiritually lazy. We stop praying. Spiritually lazy. You know, we just, we don't put no effort or nothing into the things of God. We just get lazy. And I'm going to tell you this. When I was growing up, I didn't keep a clean room. Okay. <laughs> I didn't keep I didn't I didn't keep a clean room. So I got lazy when it came to cleaning up my room. And so that laziness produced sloppiness. So spiritual laziness will produce spiritual sloppiness. Now you might have a lot of things on your plate, but if you're not diligent about doing it, it just gets sloppy. And people are like, man, you were supposed to do this. You supposed, why didn't you do this? Or why didn't you do that? Well, because everything is all over the place now because I haven't been diligent about my spiritual life. I've been lazy about it. So when I'm lazy about it, it gets sloppy. And a sloppy room is not hard to miss. My parents used to be able to walk by my room and just open the door a little bit and say, you need to clean up that room. They, they didn't have to open the door wide open to see how it looked. So when our brothers and sisters in Christ, they can tell when we are living a spiritually sloppy life. Okay? But that's why the Bible is telling us to be diligent. Keep that fire. Keep that zeal. Keep that enthusiasm. We need to be enthused about Christ like a 10-year-old before Christmas, knowing he's getting everything he wants. That's how excited we need to be about Christ. We need to be that excited about Christ, so we got to rebuke that spiritual laziness. And we must be busy and persistent when it comes to the things of God. We have to be busy in these things. Again, we no rest. You don't you don't rest from work, you rest in the work. You rest in God. I don't never take, my rest from God doesn't mean I, I walk away from Him for a while and just get a peace of mind. No. My rest from God means I sit back and I get into His Word and I just rest in Him. Yes. With Him is the foremost meditation. Blessed is the man who doesn't walk in the counsel of wicked. But his delight, his delight is in the Lord, Lord and on, on His law, He meditates day and night. That rest, you never leave the things of God. You never leave the things of God. And some of us are sitting here wondering, why haven't I been to get, been able to get to that next level? You've been doing too much resting away from God instead of resting in God. And when we are spiritually diligent and committed, we have a reward. And God will reward us. But we got to make sure that we stay persistent and we don't get lazy. Amen. Hebrews 6, 
I'll read it. Um, it says, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end in order to make your hope sure. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. If we want what has been promised, we have to be diligent about God's work. We have to be diligent about service. We have to be excited about service. If God is not number one, y'all, he's not anything. I'm going to say it again, and, and I mean that. And from my reading of the word, I see that plainly. Old and New Testament. If he is not number one in, in your life, he's not anything in your life. He don't take second places. He, the, the king don't come second. Okay? The CEO don't come second. Okay? The captain of the team don't come second. There's people fighting for who's going to be the, the leader of the team. Kobe and Shaq went through it for a while. They had to break that team up. So, so when you, so when you don't want to be, when you don't want to put him number one, and you try to be number one, he just break that up. Okay, go ahead, be number one. I'm gonna go ahead about my business. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. So again, get rid of spiritual, spiritual laziness. Get rid of it. Be diligent. You know, we need to um, really. Sometimes we need to have a, a scripture marathon. All right, all right. Where you read all day and you pray and you fellowship with your people. And I, I, I'm, I'm not talking about the type of fellowship where I just hang around with Shalai and John Isaac and we just go to the mall, go shop, and just walk around and things of God never come up. That ain't fellowship. Yeah. <laughs> That's not fellowship. Just hanging around Christians is not fellowship. Fellowship is when we get together and we talk and then we understand that God is vital to us and that we need to talk about him because I guarantee you, anytime you're hanging around, people who love God and you're just fellowshipping or whatever and you're talking some things are going to come up about Christ because he's the rock That's and he it. has to be what we stand on in everything we do yeah. so I came over to our house and stayed a long time <laughs> <laughs> and we was talking right you know and we weren't like talking focused everything on Christ but as we talked in a, a lot of times in the conversation we'd have to stop and say yeah, well this is what God wants and I want this because this is what God wants for my life so it came naturally about in the conversation, and so I don't know how I got on that, but but uh, but yes, that's a uh, we need, we need to be busy and persistent about God's work, and we need to rebuke spiritual laziness. Get rid of spiritual laziness. We must cherish the spiritual gift God gave us. Cherish it. Make it again of most importance. God gave every one of us a gift who has accepted Jesus Christ, and He wants us to use that gift. Okay, it's just like on Christmas you get a gift and you love it and you, you play with it every day or whatever. But pretty soon it just goes to the side because you've gotten too used to it. It's not that way with the spiritual gift. We're supposed to cherish it and use it at all times. It's an eternal gift. It's the only gift that you will take with you. You won't take anything else with you. You won't take your wife with you. You won't take your husband with you. Okay? You won't take your kids with you. You're going to go with you and whatever God gave you, and He's going to want an account of what you've done with it. Okay? So, like I say all the time, don't live on mama and them religion, daddy and them, auntie and them, grandmama and them, granddaddy and them, uncle and them. You can't live on that. Only thing you can live on is Christ and what He's given you. And each part has to do its work. It has to do its work. Each part has to. So we got to be diligent about doing God's work. We have to be on fire and enthused about it. Yes. Cherish it. In order to stay zealous for the things of God, we have to hate what is evil and love what is good. In order to stay enthusiastic about the things of God, we have to hate evil. We cannot embrace evil and be excited about God. Can we? We cannot embrace evil and be excited about God. Verse 9, uh, Romans 12 verse 9 says, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be stuck to it like Velcro. Stuck to it. Stuck to what's good. But 
in order to do that, the first thing we have to do is put a leash on our worldly passions. And I heard these guys, this guy from Epiphany Fellowship, he was talking about self-control and how we have to put a leash on our worldly passions. We don't need our worldly passions running around like a stray dog. We don't even need our worldly passions running around like a dog that has a home. Okay? We have, we, we have a dog. Okay? I have a little dog. Sometimes he might listen, sometimes he might not. So sometimes he'll come back when I say come here, and sometimes he'll just take off, so I gotta chase him, I gotta run around after him. We have to leash we have to leash those worldly passions in our lives. We have to lock them up, put them in the doghouse, and you stay there, you don't go nowhere. But then we have to unleash our godly passion. But the thing is, we always get that wrong. We always get that wrong. First thing we want to do is we want to unleash our worldly passions and lock up our godly passions. Now, we know God wants us to do this, 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 and this. But we only do this and we lock, and we leash up the rest of it till later. But then we let our worldly passions, we unleash those and they're running around doing what they want to do and all that. And it's like pretty soon things have got out of control. And now I gotta go back and I gotta do this and I gotta confess this and I gotta do all that stuff. That really, if I would have just locked up those passions, I wouldn't have to go through that. So the thing we have to do is lock up those worldly passions, y'all. Leash them up. Unleash your God. There's some people, some of us in here, God's called us to do some 10 years ago. And we still haven't done it because we have not unleashed our godly passions. We have not unleashed the spiritual side of us to be submitted to Christ. One thing about unleashing your godly passions and unleashing your worldly passions is your worldly passions get out of control. Your godly passions don't get out of control because Jesus said, that every, Paul said things should be done fitting and in order. Okay, So if we are in God's will, it's going to be fitting and in order. It's a boundary with God. It's not a boundary with worldly passions. Worldly passions go wherever they want to go. But in order for us to be diligent about this, in order for us to cling to what is good, we have to learn to put those on a leash. Unleash your godly passions, okay? Unleash them. Okay? It don't mean the first thing you got to do is go out and start a ministry. See, too many times we see that we want, we see something, we just want to start something. No, we need to join one. All right. Join a ministry. Yeah. Start to get busy and then God will open some doors and then you can, you know, then you can start a ministry or you can see where the need is or whatever because sometimes what we want to start may always, might already be being done. It just needs a little help. It needs your gift to step in. So let's start off with unleashing our passion just by joining the ministry. Amen. Join something. Start to do something. Yes. Start to do a little bit. Yes. Just unleash it and say, I'm just going to take a chance. We take a chance in the world. That's right. You know? That's we, right. we take a chance on throwing up and being sick the next day. We, we, we take a chance on getting diseases and all that stuff. We're so quick to take chances in the world, but won't take chances with God. All right. All right. All right. We need to take chances with God because He's walking behind us like this. Just wait for us to fall and pick us up. So we're not really going to hurt ourselves. But in the world, we're taking chances and nobody's there to catch us. Satan give you a little push and then step on back. And and watch you wreck and fall. But again, so unleash those godly passions. Be zealous. Stay on fire. Stay on fire for God. Stay on fire. And understand, you can never have too much of God. You can never have too much of Christ. You can have too much. I don't care how healthy the food is, you can have too much of it. I don't care. If it's, it can be all Brussels sprouts. Okay? You can have too much of it. It can be all oranges, all apples, all broccoli, all wheatgrass, whatever. It can be... You can have too much of it. But when it comes to Christ, when it comes to God, you can never have too much. You can, we can never have too much of Christ. That's why I say sometimes you can just sit back and have a Bible marathon. You, they have television. They had a Martin marathon. I watched Martin about five hours. <laughs> I was watching more laughing and all that. And I, just, I said, hold on, man, I ain't ready. I gotta, let, me, let me turn this TV off and get in here and, and read my Bible. But we got to have that same. The, the Bible needs to capture our attention like that Martin show captured our attention. They got marathons of everything. Good Times, uh, Taxi, Martin, Mr. Cooper. Uh, they, they got everything. Man, come on, name, name some 
Come on, man. you can even go to ESPN and see a Super Bowl marathon. They all you be watching all the Super Bowls. But we need to be on a godly marathon. But the only way we're gonna be on that is if we stay diligent about God's business. If we stay on fire, zealous. Take that fervor. Put it into Christ. Let Him work with us. So you can never have too much of God. But just remember, when He gives us, He wants us to give it out. Don't become spiritual gluttons who just get fed and keep it and keep it and keep it and and we're waiting to delegate. No. Get it. Give it out. Get it. Give it out. We can have as much of God as we want. He will never say, no, you can't have no more of me. (laughs) Our cry should be, God, give me more of you. uh, give, Give you to me more today. I want more of you. Every day, I want more and more and more. And last but not least, we have to stay on fire and excited about kingdom business no matter what. No matter what. We have to stay excited, on fire about kingdom business no matter what. No matter the circumstance in our lives, there should never be a time where we're not excited about Jesus Christ. And excitement don't always mean we jumping up and down, running around the church, high-fiving and amening and all that. Sometimes excitement can just be sitting back, letting God deal with us, resting in His presence away from everybody else. Okay? That can, that's excitement because I'm still, He's dealing with me. He's sitting down with me. I mean, we're going to be sorrowful sometimes. We're going to lose loved ones sometimes. We're going to get sick sometimes. People in our families are going to get sick. But that doesn't mean we, that we're not excited about God. That's right. That's right. I can be excited just resting in His presence, just sitting back. Yeah. Saying, Lord, have your way with me. Teach me how to deal with this. I don't know what to do, but I know you do. So I'm just going to rest in your presence. That's still being excited about the things of God. So don't think that it's always based on some emotion hands in the air falling out falling down or whatever you know I mean that's a part of us sometimes it is but that doesn't determine your spiritual fervor that doesn't determine if you're on fire it doesn't determine if you're excited about God no it doesn't what determines that is your diligence to the work God has placed in our lives. Amen. So we need to make sure that we put him as number one Amen. and not number two. Amen. Because you know, you, you, Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, But if I say, Jeremiah 20, verse 9, but if I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, his word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. Yes. I am weary of holding it in. Yes. Indeed, I cannot. After all the persecution and all that, he's sitting back saying, you know what? I know they're going to get me, but I can't hold it in. It's it's just something that won't stop. It's like fire. I'd rather give out the fire than have it burn up in me. That's the type of fire we have to have. That's why we have to be zealous. We have to keep that spiritual fervor serving the Lord. We're going to be excited about something. You don't walk through life not excited about stuff. We meet the woman of our dreams and get excited and want to tell everybody. We meet the man of our dreams and get excited and want to tell everybody. Scared to talk when he around. Can't talk. Your gum falling out your mouth because you're so excited. Why don't we get like that about Christ? Why don't we get like that about Christ? Be enthused about Christ. He'll make everything, everything you want, he'll make it better if it's in his will. And most of the things we want in life will fall fall in His will, but they have to be submitted to Him. It's not too much that we want that God can't work with. Usually it's just that we want it outside of His kingdom. So again, spiritual diligence. Just wrap up the passage. I would say stay excited. Keep the fire. And make sure that that excitement and fire are used to serve the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning. For you are holy. You are worthy. We thank you for speaking to us. We ask that we will be diligent about service in your kingdom. But we know that 
You are the author and finisher of everything. Give us the desire to stand in the middle of your will and let you do what you whatever you want to do with us. Let us be diligent about your work this year. We thank you for you've done some great things this week, Lord Jesus. You've blessed us in many ways. You've approved a building plan for us, Lord. And I know you don't want to give a building to a bunch of people who are sitting on ministries and won't do nothing with them. You want to provide a building for a church that's on fire for you and that's enthusiastic about doing your work. So if you want to be enthused this year, and you want to increase your enthusiasm, or you just want to be diligent about the things of God this year, I ask that you just stand up. If you want to be diligent about the things of God this year. But I just want people to see how many people we have by our side. It's not really making a commitment. We need to make commitments, but we need to see how many people really are after the same things we're after. And that's why we need each other. Because each part has to do its work. So if I look over and I know Frida wants to be diligent about God's work and I'm having a little trouble being diligent, I can go talk to her. And she can help me and encourage me. And then she might be on that end sometime. So we're, we need each other. So I just had you stand up so we could all see who we have. We have a body of believers. And the work is done so that we all can go out and be on one accord and get God's work done. Thank you.